Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Keith Schaefer, editor of Investing Whisperer. Uh, with me today on our backstage pass is Brian Howlett, CEO of Hemlo Explorers. So Brian and I have known each other for a long time. And when he said he was going to be going into one of the most storied gold camps in the world, Hemlo, Ontario, uh, I wanted to be involved. And, and I've been helping Brian along a little bit with uh, a couple of his financings. And so we're at a very exciting time in the company's history right now. And I'm not going to steal any more Brian's thunder. I'm going to let Brian tell the story from the beginning. Uh, but certainly, Brian, thank you so much for joining us today and give us a little bit of an update on where you're at with your first drill program. Uh, thanks very much, Keith. <clears throat> As Keith said, we are just beginning our first drill program. We've got about 20 holes planned in the next kind of three or four months. We are halfway down our first hole and uh, we, we are drilling on the uh, Armin Volcanic Complex, which we see, think is similar to the Moose Lake Porphyry, which is where the which is the home of uh, Barracks Hemlo Mine. Uh, in that location, there have been three mines over the history of the um, the project, and uh, they've produced about 22 million ounces since that since they began in 1985. Um, Barrack has certainly begun a renewed interest in the whole camp. Um, with the acquisition of a couple of uh, options in the area, and uh, they are drilling at depth up to uh, up to 2,000 meters deep. I understand. I don't have any proof of that, but that's what I'm hearing. Um, so we have about, uh, as I said, we're going to drill along the Armin Volcanic Complex. We are going to uh, go much deeper than they have before. Uh, we um, we have about 150 holes drilled into this. We don't have all of the information, but we have most of it. Uh, and they've never gone below 200 meters in the past. And we're going anywhere from 500 all the way down to 650 meters, because that's where the real action happens in this camp. And we believe we have the similar rocks to what Barrick has in their deposit, you know, up on surface. So we believe the same volcanic event created our ground as did created Barrick's ground. Um, we have... Um, uh, you know, the, these, these folded dikes that, that occur, you know, deep underground and very, very similar to what we see in the barrack ground. Uh, the whole area is exciting. Um, and, you know, I'll go back. Uh, I joined this company earlier this year and really a rebirth of the company. We used to be called Canadian Ore Bodies, and now we've been rebranded Hemlo Explorers to really give homage to the area we're in. And, you know, it's, it's, it's called the Hemlo Camp for a reason. Um, in, in a very short period, we've come a long way from really having, uh, when I joined a CFO, and uh, we now have a full geologic team, uh, two of which were ex-Barrick employees at the, at the Hemlo mine, uh, one for 18 years and knows the rocks very, very, very well. Um, and they're led by a gentleman named Dan McCormick, who has been in the Canadian Goldstein for about 40 years. Uh, he, he's worked at places like uh, uh, Queenston, Yamana, Agnico Eagle, up in a little bit up in Red Lake, and really, really is um, leading a great team. And uh, so we're excited to have him and the rest of the team working up, working for us. Um, uh, and that's the fo that's the focus for now. We have two other properties we're working on in the area. Uh, the second one we acquired from O3 Mining. Uh, back in May, it's called Hemlo West. It, it's got about eight kilometers of shear zone, and it's about 15 kilometers due west of the Hemlo mine. You know, we believe on the same structure. <clears throat> We're still working on kind of the background data and understanding everything we have there, uh, and we hope to be drilling that. You know, probably this summer sometime. Uh, it's road accessible. Uh, we have lots of infrastructure in the area. Uh, we, we, you know, all the services that service the barrack mine are available to us as well. All of kind of the third party people. And so it Brian, is a, tell me a little bit about your, sh your, your, your shareholders, because you've got, uh, a, a tight share structure, uh, and B, you've got two very large, well-funded, deep pocketed shareholders. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. We've got about 27 million shares out right now, and we've got about two and a half million warrants, uh, our, our primary shareholders is a group called Northfield Capital, uh, led by Robert Cudney, who is the um, one of the kingpins of Toronto uh, junior mining finance. He's had a number of successful deals. 
and he's really excited. And he, him and Northfield own about 22% of the company. The, the other big shareholder is O3 Mining. And for those that don't know, they are a subsidiary of, of the Osisco Group and Sean Rusin, and they own about 14%. And both of those are very dedicated long-term shareholders. Um, management and board and the McKinnon family who founded this company own another, you know, kind of 15 to 20% with, um, with some other friends and family in there. So uh, it's about a 40% float in the, in the public. Um, and, and we're looking here to, you know, kind of tr- increase our retail awareness and, um, you, you know, with, with any success on the drill bit, we're going to get, uh, we're going to get a lot of excitement into this stock and into this story. Um, and then you've also got a, a hell of a board for being in Ontario. So a being in Ontario is a great place because obviously Toronto is one of the mining finance capitals of the world. Uh, every, all the investment bankers and geologists can come out and uh, see the property, but Tell us a little bit about, you, you, you've got a pretty high-powered board. you want to tell everyone about that? Yeah, for, for a company with a $20 million market cap, we do have a hell of a board. Uh, we, we, are, we, we have uh, the former Premier of the province of Ontario, Ernie Eves, and we also have Chris Hodson, who is the minister of, former Minister of Mines um, in Ontario as well. Uh, add to that, uh, and know, you know, probably... The, the, the wisest man in mining in, in Canada is John Harvey. Uh, John was at the ground floor of Naranda when the Hemlo mine was discovered and developed. So he, he was actually the former past president of Hemlo Mines, uh, which is one of the companies that got swallowed up in a number of mergers and acquisitions in the area that created, you know, the current structure today. So, you know, we have a, a board that's second to none. Okay. And so now let, let's assume then, so you, in terms of your news flow, you're doing 20 holes right now. Uh, I, I'm assuming that you're going to wait to assay labs are all backed up in terms of our first news flow out of this drill program. Uh, first five or six holes, I'm guessing you're, you're going to batch a few of these holes together. And uh, how long do you think that'll take to get our, our first set of news out? Well, I, I, I hate to kind of forecast uh, timing on these things because as you just said, you know, labs are backed up. Um, but we expect to have our first, first hole finished, you know, probably sometime next week. Uh, we're not going to wait to get that in, in the assay labs. And they're pr- promising a quick turnaround. So I would say, you know, hopefully by, you know, end of February, early March, we'll have some initial results. Um, instead of we're doing 20 holes, a minimum of 10,000 meters. But as far as I'm concerned, that's just the beginning. We've got a lot of work to do here, um, and we've got a lot of excitement coming. So uh, I would advise anybody who owns this stock or who's thinking of owning the stock that they should be uh, looking at it here. It, it is very tight at the present time, and it, does, it doesn't it does trade a ton, but uh, you know, pa- patient investors can certainly build a position here if they're uh, there to, uh, to stick around on the bid. And, and this uh, structure here, uh, and geological structure that, you, that you're drilling, yep. uh, is this going to be uh, fairly narrow, high-grade veins? Is, there, is it a broadly disseminated target? Uh, what, what kind of grade was Hemlo, and what kind of grade are you you're, you're looking for? Very similar types of things, or well, well, Hemlo's got a couple of, of features to it. It has a big open pit uh, that's recently been closed, and that was fairly low grade. Uh, the underground stuff runs anywhere from six to ten grams. Um, and that's the kind of stuff we're looking for, but it can be fairly narrow veined. Yes. And so, uh, do you see the possibility of, but, but from what you've told me here, you're, you're, you're drilling deep. So you don't see the possibility of an open pit asset there. You're, you're, you're after, uh, the deeper stuff that, that Hemlo saw. We're after the, the deeper, richer stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so we just have 30 seconds left here, Brian. There's something here that we haven't chatted about that you think is important. We've talked about logistics. We've talked about management. We've talked about uh, uh, the geology a little bit, share structure, the board. Um, social license up there is, is Ontario is a pretty good place. Uh, social license is very good. We have two uh, First Nations in the area, the Pick River Band and the Pick Mulvert Band. Uh, we've been in constant contact with them and are working with them to, to bring this project forward. Uh, we're looking forward to, you know, you know, building a real a real asset here that uh, can help employ them and create value for the for the whole community up there. Awesome, and, Brian. And, we're and out of time. Thank you. Recognize that. Thank you, Keith. Okay. God bless, my friend. Cheers. Cheers.